Uh, let us now speak to Kurt Hackbath, who's a writer and journalist, joins us from the Mexican city of Oaxaca. Uh, Kurt, so this has been some time in the coming, to say the least, but are we finally on the road to some sort of accountability in this terrible saga? I would hope so. Um, what happened with the commission is historic in and of itself. Um, these were just preliminary uh, results. These are not the final findings of the sure. commission. And as Clip uh, pointed out, uh, the Mexican government has, for the first time, admitted that what happened in Ayotzinapa was a crime of state with the participation of people at the highest levels of government, either in the crime itself or definitely in the cover-up of what happened afterwards. And barely a day after these preliminary findings, we see now uh, the arrest of the former attorney general, Jesus Estemorio Karam, who was the attorney general under uh, Enrique Peña Nieto at that time, uh, for crimes of uh, forced disappearance, torture, and acting against uh, the administration of justice, along with uh, warrants which have been issued for 20 other members of the military. So this is no small, this is no small affair. Indeed not. Uh, might it lead all the way to the top, to the president himself? That is what the families uh, and everyone who uh, lived through that night uh, truly hope. What happened in Ayotzinapa was truly uh, a vicious, horrendous uh, a crime. You know? 43 students from the normal school of Ayotzinapa uh, were disappeared. Um, and then there was this massive cover-up from the Peña Nieto government about it, which uh, included officials from the federal government, uh, members of the army. Uh, the commission has found that the army even had an infiltrator in amongst the students uh, who was also disappeared. Um, so this was uh, something that could have been prevented. Uh, the local government, the federal government, even the army was well aware of what was going on that night. Nobody stepped in uh, to intervene. And then the cover-up afterwards was, was horrendous. Uh, the attorney general, Morio Karam, came out with what was called the historic truth at the time, that the students had been um, killed by uh, a group called the Guerreros Unidos, you know, a cartel group, local group, and then their bodies were burned in a garbage dump in the town of Cocula. This was quickly proven to have been impossible. It would have been impossible to have burned 43 bodies in that garbage dump without, uh, you know, without people right. being seen. It would have been seen for kilometers. So what we're seeing here is the slow unraveling of a massive lie. OK, uh, so, with, so other, was, other than bone fragments, yeah. as, as far as I understand, other than bone fragments recovered from just three of the victims, nothing is known about uh, the fate of the students, what actually happened to them. Is that right? That's right. That, that, still, remains to be, that still remains to be found. That's a pending matter that needs to be resolved. One of the preliminary findings of the commission is that the students were split into three groups right at the bus terminal in Iguala Guerrero. So they were not all taken together. But what actually happened to them is still, uh, is still unknown. What's uh, so many questions to be answered but, uh, that we don't know the answers to at this point, of course. But why would there be a cover up that leads, if not all the way to the top, pretty close to it? Well, one of the large suspicions is that there was um, a drug shipment in one of the buses and that uh, the students, you know, boarded that bus unaware of what was in it. Um, that's, that's one of the largest hypotheses that they're working on uh, so far. But let's recall, uh, you know, the Mexican army has a long history of disappearing people, you know, for a, a variety of reasons. Um, just now, a truth commission has been set up to explore what was called the Dirty War in the 1970s, right, when the army acted with impunity against dissident groups. So, you know, Ayotzinapa is just not just a one-off. There is a long history here. Uh, and so the fact that the truth commission recognized this as a crime of state and has arrested somebody as important as Murillo Karam, who was a very important person in the Peña admi uh, administration, sends out a very strong signal to me that no one is safe here. Right, so those responsible for the crimes are uh, currently walking free. So is it possible that as a result of these current investigations that there could be therefore accountability that those who are responsible may have their day in court? That's the hope. Uh, the president said very clearly yesterday that this is not the end of the road, <clears throat> that the investigation continues and that the attorney general's office will have to act. And, you know, this was one of uh, the historic pro historic promises of the Lopez Obrador um, campaign to get to the bottom of Ayotzinapa. 
It's taken some time. He's in the fourth year of a six-year administration, so the clock is ticking. We saw some significant advances this week, but this is not enough. This is far from enough. And, you know, ultimately, uh, AMLO's administration will be judged by history uh, by if they really get to the bottom of this or if this is just, um, you know, an example of picking off a few people but leaving the large body of the crime um, unpunished. And that has to happen. Yeah, let's hope there is some sort of wholesale resolution. You can only imagine what the, the families of the victims have been going through. Uh, we'll have to leave it there. Indeed. Kurt Hagbath, we appreciate your perspective and analysis. Thank you very much. Thank you.